Hello and welcome to the Streamcast. My name is Isaac and today we're going to be talking about the Norse god Mimir. Unlike the previous episode, we'll be going over his role in God of War and the aspects of his character taken from Norse mythology. The Midsummer Night's Dream is a play written by Shakespeare. It involves the mysterious fairy who serves the fairy king Oberon. In one timeline, said fairy travels to Midland where he meets the Black Swordsman Guts. In another timeline, he travels to Midgard where he meets Odin. Berserk is a dark world devoid of happiness for the most part, with a protagonist that is constantly fighting against causality. So I think it's safe to say that Midgard is the preferred choice. This matches up to one of Mimir's stories where he tells us he used to be the fairy king's errand boy. I couldn't have been much older than you when I started. A fairy king's errand boy, an unofficial jester. By night, my mates and I had the run of the forest. Good fellows they called us, neighbor sprites to the last. We'd get up to all manner of mischief, making fools of the local mortals. But as long as our lord was kept amused, we were spared the consequences. Oh. Then one day he was not amused, and I saw fit to move on. However, in Norse mythology, Mimir is most likely a Jotun, as his sister, Besla, also a Jotun, was Odin's mother. Mimir joins the Aesir gods who serve under Odin and plays the role of advisor for Odin. During this time, the Aesir and the Vanir tire of a war and decide to make peace with each other. The Vanaheim, home of the Vanir, and Asgard, home of the Aesir, do a trade, swapping some of their best warriors for another. Vanaheim send over Freya and Njord, and the Aesir send over Honia and Mimir. Unfortunately, Honia is revealed to be lacking in value and can only make wise decisions when Mimir is there to counsel him. The Vanir feel like they have been cheated, so cut Mimir's head off and send it back to Asgard. Odin, a known hoarder of knowledge, doesn't want to lose Mimir's wisdom, so rubs herbs on Mimir's severed head and, and chants incantations on it to prevent it from rotting keeping Mimir somewhat alive. When we first meet Mimir, he's encased within a tree in front of the last known portal to Jotunheim, telling Odin's sons and Baldur to leave in a not so polite fashion. Your father won't let me go Baldur and he won't let you kill me. You have nothing to offer me, so take your questions, take your threats, take these two worthless wankers and piss off. Now, while Odin won't let Mimir be killed, Kratos doesn't much care for Odin and lops off Mimir's head at Mimir's request, of course. Kratos is not a monster. God's on high. Save me from this barbarian! Please! Please! No! 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 Kratos proceeds to take Mimir's head to the Witch of the Woods, who, spoiler alert, is Freya, and she reanimates him. She reanimates him in the same way Odin does in mythology, with herbs and incantations, and proceeds to spit in his face. I really like the way Mimir is reincarnated, as it's the same way Odin revives Mimir in the Norse mythology, and it serves as a link between Odin and Freya, as in this game, the lore is Freya taught Odin how to use certain spells and incantations. Mimir goes on to help Kratos and Atreus in their quest from this point on and becomes the fourth head to help Kratos on his journey. Difference being, this time it's a winning head. The first three being Medusa's head, the head of Uriali and the head of Helios. Mimir goes on to give helpful advice throughout the game to further the story, more on that later. 
God of War is a semi open world game or a wide linear game according to Cory Barlog which basically means you're put in a large world and can only do certain things at certain times. It gives the illusion of an open world game whilst only letting the player progress to certain areas at certain times. This is done well with the lowering of the water levels in the Lake of Nine hub area in Midgard which opens up new areas as you further progress in the game. Why do I bring this up? Well, a large part of traversal in God of War is done by boat which involves zero combat which can get boring, but this takes us nicely back to Mimir. During these boat sections, Mimir will give exposition on the game, be it character's backstories, motivation, world history, and so on. This is done in a non-intrusive way that's really enjoyable. In fact, when testing the game, playtesters were just stopping the boat, which worried the devs, but it turns out they just wanted to finish hearing Mimir's stories. So because of this, the devs implemented a feature where if you left the boat mid-conversation, Mimir would start up again from where he left off when you got back in. A really nice touch. These lore dumps really bring the story together and further bring context to your journey. We learn why Freya cannot leave Midgard and Odin uses Freya's own Vanya magic against her to trap her. He also robbed her of a warrior spirit. Freya cannot fight, even to defend herself. No living thing may she harm by blade nor spell, which explains why she lives alone. Midgard isn't very safe, and if you can't fight back, well, don't leave your house. But in the God of War Ragnarok trailer, we see Freya with a sword in hand attacking Kratos, which means she somehow breaks this curse and she gets her warrior spirit back from Odin. Does this mean she makes a deal with Odin? Surely if she could have broken the curse on her own, she would have done so already, which only leaves some sort of interaction with Odin. Mimir also gives us background into his life. He describes that he's not from the Nine Realms and served another master. Mimir was a fairy king's errand boy and an official jester. He then speaks of how he entered these lands. These lands meaning the Nine Realms. He changed his name and moved north. And I personally think his name used to be Puck. Mimir gives sage advice throughout the game, and when they recover his eye, he's able to open a path to Jotunheim for them. Mimir is instrumental to our journey as he not only leads us in the right direction and offers great counsel, like when he instructs Kratos to tell a trace about the boy's true nature, he's also quite literally the key to get to Jotunheim. Due to Mimir being trusted by the giants, he's given Bifrost crystal eyes that allow him to travel to Jotunheim, which in turn allows Kratos and Atreus to spread phase ashes. However, the story may not have gone so smoothly. Before the procedure, he drank 16 cups of ale to stop the transplant from being painful. He drank so much in fact that he almost convinced them to plant them in his nipples during his inebriation. So remember, drink responsibly before surgery. Actually, maybe don't drink at all before surgery. I'm gonna keep this section super short because I've only got one thing to say. But at the end of the game, Brock and Sindri, and I quote, take an uncomfortable number of measurements when looking after Mimir's head at the end of the game. Could they be making him an artificial body? Be pretty interesting to see. And you have to remember that Mimir is also a god, so if he gets an artificial body, you know, he might become a really powerful ally to fight along with. Although, judging from the trailer where we see him on a little headstand reading the book, I don't see that happening. But I thought it was an interesting little line. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to leave a like. Uh, if you did like, why not consider subscribing and you know leave any comments on you know any gods you'd like to see us cover next. Um, that's all from me. Have a nice day, guys.